Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I've got an exciting video for you guys. So WelderMade is proud to be a sponsor of Skills USA. We will go into that in a short minute. But long story short, I've got about 20,000 pounds of material to process, get in boxes and get on that semi truck right there in the next three days and get it to Atlanta, Georgia, where I'll be arriving in an airplane to help unload the semi truck and uh, get all the material to the competitors at the National Skills USA competition. So stay tuned, I'm gonna take you along on the whole journey for from loading the material, pack, packaging it, uh, even the laser cutting process that the projects go through, the prep process, the boxing, uh, the freight, the shipping, my flight there, and we're gonna go through the whole experience together. It's gonna be a multiple series video, so stay tuned. So one of the projects that we're supplying for the National Welding Competition in Atlanta has a bevel on it. So there's two pieces that need beveled. There's roughly 80 contestants, so I've got to bevel 160 pieces. Perfectly all the exact same. So every competitor has the same piece. And before beveling uh, would just take forever. and I would chop up two or three pieces at the most in my bandsaw right here. I've got another project in there right now, but this bandsaw cuts at, I can turn it to the angle I want the bevel and it makes really nice straight cut bevels and it's the fastest way that I could find to put clean bevels on other than milling each piece which just would take way too long. And so I wanted to build a jig that would clamp hydraulically with this clamp in there that would hold 10 pieces at the right angle so we could cut down them all even at the same time and so here's all the pieces that I will have to bevel for this one order and to save time I built this jig here this jig gets clamped that hydraulic ram clamps it here and then let me show you how this works all right, so I've got 10 pieces here. I made it to where I can bevel 10 pieces at once. So you grab your 10 pieces, slide it in the jig, and it lines them all up at the right angle to where that bandsaw blade can cut them all at once. And then I just tighten these set screws so the parts don't move while it's cutting. And it is up to my production by, <laughs> I'd say 10%. Um, at least and it takes about I'd say two minutes for the bandsaw to cut all the way through these parts and so I can uh, push out five projects every two minutes where before I could only do maybe one two if I was lucky every two minutes and so it's really sped up my production and helps me be more accurate with the parts because they're all the exact same so on this jig here I chucked up this C channel here on the bottom up to my mill and I milled this flat so all the pieces would sit flat and then inside of here you can see I put another backing plate that is the angle that we're shooting for which is a 30 degree angle and all those parts just butt up to that stopper. And as long as they're all smooth on the top and everything's sitting flat, they all cut exactly square and straight. 
And so that's a little trick. Uh, it took me about two hours to build and design, design and build the jig, but it saves me hours. So on an order like this, I was normally sitting at this bandsaw for days and I will have this order of, what did I say? 180, 180 pieces. Uh, it'll only take me about two and a half hours. Uh, if you do the math there, when I told you the two minutes, it might be off a little bit just because of transferring parts and stuff. But anyway, the gist of it is make little tools like this that make your life a lot easier and make you more productive to where you can work smarter, not harder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you this guy in production. Once I get the saw set up at the desired angle, I'm going to set it up to 30 degrees and uh, start cutting. So stay tuned. Well, that's going to be 10 down, 150 to go. And so the idea is if I get, if Welder Made keeps going, growing at the rate that it does, and I have high quantity orders like this, then um, I would build another jig to where, by that one's cutting, I could be placing 10 more parts in the next jig to where it's a faster turnaround time in between cuts and then I think I could double my time. I can't wait to show you guys the quality of cut. This bandsaw is so big that it's built for big beam and tubing and pipe and whatnot and so these 10 pieces are nothing for it for that big blade. It stays so straight. It's just as straight as on a mill I swear. But, uh, yeah, I think that is really, really cool. It's really cool when you can use your own skill and knowledge to save yourself time and make your job easier. Let me show you on this back end. Pretty cool. Little view of the shop. It's a mess right now. But been really busy on both businesses, so haven't had a lot of time to clean, but no matter how busy we are, we still maintain our equipment. That's really important. All right, guys. So I want to talk a little bit about the time frame that we are under to get these projects out. So we received the projects last night from the laser, which is in a different location than the Wildermade Shipping Center. We have two locations. And uh, so the competition is in Atlanta, Georgia, and the projects need to arrive on the 18th. Today is the 11th, which is a Saturday. This is June 11th, 2022. And uh, we could not possibly get parts sooner because our laser has been so busy with other website orders and uh, other projects. So we finally got cut time on the laser. I got home late last night at about 11.30 with the project. And we are starting to box today, which is Saturday. Um, the semi because we're going to have roughly 21,000 pounds of steel going to Atlanta with all the projects. So there's a semi that my grandpa's going to drive from here in Utah, Vernal, Utah, over to Atlanta, Georgia, which is over 1,700 miles with uh, DOT regulations and the rules and um, whatnot. He can only drive eight hours a day. So he's going to need um, roughly three days. And so the semi needs to leave here, at my location, Wednesday morning. So we've got 460 projects to process and box this weekend. And then my grandpa and I are going to run over to our other location and grab the other material that is just raw material for the welding and fab competition. 
And so we've got a lot to do in the next couple days and it all has to be perfect and all has to be right for the competition. So uh, kind of follow along and see our process and, make, and see us crunch to get this order done and uh, I'll get on a flight to Atlanta. Okay, so this, uh, this cut just finished out. You can see all of the drops that fall, fell down. And you can see the cut quality on these bevels are just perfect. And they're all exactly the same. All right, guys, I got some beveling done. This is half of the beveling that I need to do. Um, the bandsaw is getting a little boring over here by myself. So I'm going to go and finish the evening packaging with the wife. And finish the bandsaw cutting tomorrow. So Let's go show you what's going on over here. doing today? Huh? What are you doing today? Helping dad? Are you working for your brother me? Mm -hmm. Putting projects in a box? For day one, we got half the beveling done. This is our first steel project that uh, on the website is called ST-1. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite steel projects. Um, we need 80 of them. And what are we at right now? 64. We're at 64. So we're going to have this project finished today. So I'm going to hop on and help her um, finish boxing. But that's going to leave us with two more steel projects and the aluminum project that is in this pallet here. So we're thinking if we can finish this start and start on the others tonight, stay on one, maybe get halfway done. I'll come in really early in the morning and get the bandsaw work done so we can have as many hands on packaging as possible. And we're going to shoot to get both still projects done tomorrow that way all we have to do Monday the day before it leaves is do the aluminum project and then just get everything on a semi and get it headed to Atlanta so that's our plan we'll see how it doesn't work but we'll give it a whirl so I kind of want to show you guys our packaging process here so with this competition and all the other stuff that we do it's very crucial that we get the right amount of parts in the box to complete the project so nobody is shorted parts or no one has any extras. And so over time, Angel and I have developed a procedure that makes it almost impossible for us to miss out a piece or send an extra piece. And that is 
created a very high success rate where we very rarely have issues and it's uh, made it really easy to teach new upcoming employees and uh, they can have high success rates and feel confident in uh, the packaging. So what we do is we lay out each part that makes the whole project onto the table and say we start at, we normally do sets of 10, that way we don't get uh, too far ahead of ourselves and you guys will understand that here in a minute. So normally we start out with stacks of 10 of every piece that's in the blueprint. And then we count, make sure each stack's at 10 and then when you go to start boxing, all the boxer has to do is put one of each part in the box. And then when we get to the bottom of our pile, if there's an extra piece or not enough, then we knew we screwed up somewhere in that 10. And that's why we only do 10 at a time, because if we did stacks of 50 at a time, we'd have to cut open 50 boxes when we knew there was an issue. And so that is step number one, verifying, well, there's actually three steps. The first step is when we verify that all the pieces are here and there's 10 of each piece. The second step is- we count after every package. Yep, we count after every package that way we don't have to redo 10 boxes or cut open 10 boxes. Um, but it's, what's really cool is these parts are so precise that we always just look down them and you can see the flat plane and see if there's an extra piece in a pile and you don't have to go through counting them all the way. But uh, after we have a complete set, we know exactly how much this project should weigh down to a couple ounces depending on how much packing paper you put in it. And so our third step is taking that box and weighing it. And we can tell if we're missing a piece or have too much if the weight is off. And so we'll show Angel doing that process here. All right, 20.05. I think every single one has been 20.05 or, or 4. 20.10. Uh, so like half, up to 5 ounces. Ha no, ha no, like half an ounce. Half an ounce. Maybe. So this makes us really confident that every piece in all these boxes are perfect and we don't have any extras. Steel, at least every yeah. piece is a pound. Yeah, because each... Each piece is about a pound and it gets very obvious with steel if there's an extra piece or not enough. The aluminum on the other hand isn't so isn't so forgiving on the scale. But uh, what we have to do is be very accurate with these. So that way we have confidence in these big programs like SkillsUSA using us and having confidence that there won't be any problems when it's competition day. And it gives us a peace of mind knowing that every box is perfect and we can tell our customer that they've got nothing to worry about. So that's a little bit of our, our shipping method. And we're going to do that another how many times to, in the next two days? Mm. Well, 80, 160, and well, another 80 of aluminum. And then this 23. So I don't know. Well, yeah, I can't add that fast. If you guys go ahead and add that up, and put it in the comments. And we'll uh, we'll we'll see that later. So we we ain't got we'll time to do that now. We're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep going until the pallets are empty, yeah. and then we're gonna go get some more. All right, stay tuned. Okay, everybody, it's uh, the morning of day two of packaging the projects. Angel and I came in early, left the kids with the mother-in-law. Only the one, yeah. Still got one you gotta take care of. But that one just sleeps and poops, so. Um, we've got 30 of project two done. So we're we've got some good ground on project two. Angel's gonna be packaging project two while I go finishing up beveling project three. That way my pieces are ready when she's ready to box that project 
Our goal today is to finish project two and three to where all we have to do is the aluminum tomorrow. We will see how that goes. All right, guys and gals, we just finished up the beveling. Let me give you kind of a shot of it here. A lot of bevels. I'm gonna roll it over here into the shipping center, and uh, Angel's just finishing up project two. So that's 160 projects that we have boxed in a day and a half. We're gonna go ahead and try for project number three. Hey everyone, just gonna give an update. So we skipped out on video number three on accident. Um, we were just really busy, and I forgot my camera for the day. But uh, on day two, we were able to package projects two and three, and then half of project four to where yesterday on day three, all we had to do was um, package 20 aluminum projects. And so the girls uh, took care of packaging the last 20 aluminum projects while I uh, hopped in a semi-truck with my grandpa and went on a journey to get the other material for the fab competition, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, everything worked out good and we are here on to on day four where we are going to be putting all of the projects in these crates hopefully they fit we got a little work to do to them but then we will load up the semi get everything tarped that way my grandpa can start driving tomorrow morning, which should be Wednesday. He'll have just over 1,700 miles of driving. Um, we're trying to, I'm trying to meet him there in Atlanta Saturday. Um, he might get there Friday night. That's the night that I'll be flying in, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I want to get there a little bit before him and get to the convention center and figure out where he's going to be getting unloaded and what forklift we can use that way he's not waiting on us and uh, have a stress-free environment for him in Atlanta because uh, truck driving through there is already going to be quite the task so I'll, uh, I'll keep you guys along the journey and uh, we'll talk soon <music> I got everything in the boxes. I got a little bit of packing paper on the top. Um, in case any water gets in, it kind of protects the boxes and gives a little cushion. I got a box of stickers, some business cards, extra parts and pieces in case we need them. But I've got both crates packaged. And now I am going to cut the lids for the top of the crates. I'm gonna put them on top and screw them down, and then I'm gonna get some steel banding and go around, and then uh, we'll start loading the semi. We've got all the projects in crates. Crates got the new lids screwed down, and then I did uh, two steel bands both directions to kind of help hold the integrity of the the crate on both pallets. I'm thinking 
with my math and whatnot, we should be just over 4,300 pounds per pallet. And so now that uh, I've got those packaged, my grandpa's getting his semi serviced and just about ready to hook onto the trailer and him and I will start uh, loading everything up and getting it tarped for him to leave tomorrow morning. Um, the cool thing about all this is um, the trucking company that my family owns, uh, shout out to Quicksand Trucking, uh, they are really busy right now but they were able to pull one truck uh, kind of off their, their regular business and um, help make sure that I get these, this product to Atlanta safely. And so it's really, really nice to be able to have somebody that you can trust haul this stuff that that means so much to me and the competitors. And if it wasn't to, if it wasn't to make it to Atlanta, it would be uh, a terrible thing. That you'd have hundreds of students showing up in Atlanta that wouldn't have anything to compete with. So um, my grandpa's going to drive the semi. He's leaving tomorrow morning. He's trying to drive uh, roughly 600 miles a day. He said so, be roughly three days, and. Uh, I'll try to take you guys through the experience of uh, loading this stuff up and getting it tarped down and, and whatnot. All right, so I knew I told you guys I'd show you the process of uh, strapping everything down and getting the trailer loaded to go to Atlanta. But I had a business meeting that I went to, and by the time I got back, my grandpa had already done most of it. So, um, yeah, I got here, and he was wrestling some of these tarps in the wind. And so I just went ahead and just hurried and helped him get it done. So uh, we missed a little bit of video there, uh, but I'll explain a little bit of what we did here. So this is his setup. The old Kenworth. We were able to uh, get his truck service yesterday from the quicksand mechanics. They uh, gave his truck a good service. They also um, mounted some new stuff in his dash for him. He got his uh, got an iPad there to log his hours and and read the maps and stuff. So he's uh, nice and ready to go. And then uh, his tires were a little low, so we ran and got him some new drive tires. So he's all good there. But uh, so on this trailer. Right here we've got the two crates that the sun, the sun's kind of in our eyes. Let's go to the other side. So he's going to leave this morning, I don't know what time, but today's the day when everything, everything happened the way it was supposed to. We got everything done in the time frame we needed to. And so now he's just got a, a short 1800 mile drive. So we got two crates full of the welding competition projects. Um, I can't remember what we said there was in there. I think it's like 460 projects roughly. Um, four different steel projects, one aluminum project. And then under this tarp right here, we have 64 sheets of 3 16 plate that is cut four foot by four foot for the uh, welding fab competition. And above that, on the, we have a crate on top of there that is uh, 80 half inch plates that are uh, 12 inches by 12 inches uh, for the oxy fuel cutting test. And so that's what those, that's what that is there under the tarp. And then under here we have 22 joints of three and a half by three and a half by eighth inch wall square tubing. That is uh, kind of a rare tube that we had to look for. Um, had to bring some out of California, but uh, anyway, we got everything tarped so it stays dry in case he hits some rain. We don't want the, the stuff to get wet and rust before he gets there in Atlanta. And so, yeah, now he's just got a, a three days on the road. He's planning on doing it in three days. And... Uh, I'm actually kind of jealous. I wish I was riding with him, but uh, I am going to fly there and try to get everything arranged for his arrival and uh, get him guided in there to the convention center in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, the best route so he doesn't get in a bind and uh, figure out how to get him unloaded there. 
and uh, get him back on his way. I think they said they found a back load that he gets to haul um, from Atlanta back to Utah. That way the truck can uh, be making some money on the way home. But uh, I'm really grateful that I can have somebody that I trust to take this out there and make sure it gets there safe. And um, if anyone could do it, it's definitely him. He's been uh, truck driving for for his whole life and here in the oil field moving rigs and hauling frac sand and, and stuff like that. So um, I'm excited for him. It looks like it's going to be a nice, the weather looks like it's going to be nice, but uh, I'll keep you guys updated. So today is Wednesday. I'm flying out of Salt Lake City, which is um, about three hours from my hometown in Vernal, Utah. So Friday morning, I'm going to be driving to Salt Lake City to get on a plane, uh, flying with Delta Airlines. It's going to be a one flight to Atlanta, Georgia. I'll be getting there, um, it looks like Friday evening. If everything goes good, the truck will arrive Friday evening as well, but uh, we'll just sleep and then I'll go into the convention center Saturday morning and get everything loaded, um, unloaded, sorry about that. But uh, until then, I've got to kind of do some paperwork for the welding business and um, get everybody lined out for the week that I'm going to be gone and uh, just get my trip arranged. I'm hoping to take a, a day or two off before I leave and spend some time with the family before I'm gone for a week in Atlanta. But uh, we'll see how that goes. The shop's been pretty busy lately. But uh, thanks for coming along with us. And... Uh, I'll keep on vlogging the whole trip, and I'm excited to show you guys the uh, Skills USA conference. It's it's a pretty neat thing that they do, and it's pretty big. Um, we will be explaining Skills USA and everything that they're about here really soon, but uh, didn't have time to do it. We needed to make sure everything is on the truck and trailer and ready to go out. But uh, now we're there, we can kind of relax a little bit, and and uh, now we just need to get to Atlanta safe. Thank <laughs> you.